Lumbering through the old oceans of what is now western South America, a colossal aquatic predator turned the tides for the world record of largest animal in existence. Meet Parasitus. This giant cetacean was announced at the beginning of this very month, on August 2nd, making a gigantic splash in various news articles, many of which claim the animal as being the largest animal to ever live, even exceeding the weight of the current champion, the blue whale. While its popularity seems incredibly recent, it was actually discovered all the way back in 2013 by a paleontology team led by Dr. Mario Urbina, who works at the University of San Marcos Natural History Museum, located in the capital of Peru. The discovery of Parasitas starts with an exploratory trip through the Ica Desert, where Urbina passed through a ravine that he had seen many times before, though it was a bit different now. Eroded out of the earth, a large rock stood high in the dry and hot weather. Urbana quickly asked the driver to stop, but the vehicle kept moving. Urbana and the driver argued until he decided to suddenly jump out of the window and chase this mysterious large rock. The stone had a pinkish tone in the center and had the characteristics of a vertebra from a cetacean, which is the kind of animal that includes dolphins and whales. The only issue, though, was that this vertebra was incredibly big, almost unnaturally so. So big that one could have easily mistaken it for a giant stone without a second thought. Though many eons ago, the entirety of the Ica Valley was covered in water, where aquatic animals called Bessilosaurids laid claim. After four years of excavation, it was found that there were several pieces of vertebra belonging to this animal in the same deposit. Because of the enormous weight of the fossils, it took years before they arrived at the University of San Marcos where Urbano was able to demonstrate that they truly were the fossils of an animal never before recorded. Due to his arguing for the importance of the fossils, he obtained the financing to continue the extraction. Located vertically in a rocky hill, it becomes more impenetrable as the excavation continues. In order to get out just a single bone, seven layers of incredibly tough rock need to be dug out. This was no easy task, given that it took yet another four years for the team to break down the hill, with the only tools at their disposal being a chisel and hammer. Only two years ago were they actually given the proper machinery to speed up the process. In total, the discovery consists of 13 vertebrae, 5 ribs, and part of the pelvis. This was enough for a team of scientists to confirm and name the animal Parasitus colossus. Parasitus refers to the country of origin, and Colossus is of course in relation to the animal's enormous size. However, the journey is far from over, as there is still more fossil material waiting to be uncovered. Urbana wants to continue the dig and hopefully find the head of this massive animal, since that would be extremely helpful in determining just what kind of lifestyle and feeding habits Parasitus had. But digging vertically has life-threatening dangers. The work on the fossil is stopped due to the risk that the rock that's been suspended may end up giving way and crushing any workers beneath it. The only option seems to be the use of explosives in order to get closer to the bones and continue the search. One can only hope that the process of blowing up the hill doesn't damage the bones as well. Urbana has hoped that things will resume shortly. However, the size of Parasitus can hardly compare to the amount of money Urbana has contributed to the discovery. Moving each individual piece of fossil requires hiring workers and tools, leading Urbana to spend every penny he can afford on Parasitas. However, hope is not all lost, as this sudden burst into the spotlight along with this amazing animal could very well lead to more funding, given that the entire paleontological community now recognizes just how important Parasitas is, and the mysteries surrounding its way of life. Now Parasitas hasn't officially broken the world record for largest animal, but the size estimates have left many scientists with their jaws on the floor. Keep in mind that these weights are incredibly speculative right now, and will most likely be narrowed down as more fossil material is studied. Lower estimates put Parasitas at 85 tons, however the largest estimates reach a breathtaking 320 tons, with an average of 180. To compare, male blue whales average about 100 tons, while females average around 150. The biggest blue whale ever recorded was a female in the southern oceans of Antarctica that weighed in at 90 tons. This means that if size estimates for Parasitas are as heavy as some have said, then blue whales are surely going to be bumped to second place. And while Parasitas may have been heavier than a blue whale, it definitely wasn't nearly as long. Right now it sits at a pretty good 17 to 20 meters in length, 
about as long as two school buses. Blue whales, on the other hand, measure at 24 to 30 meters, which is equal to roughly three school buses. As for what Parasitus really looked like, there is still a lot up in the air. Most reconstructions show it having an incredibly disproportionate head-to-body ratio, giving it an almost comedically fat look. There have been other illustrations that show a variety of possible head shapes and eating habits. Everything from baleen, which are used as fibers to eat small organisms, to a lifestyle like manatees, where the animal forages in shallow water. There are also just as many possible variations in flipper sizes and shapes for this animal. Common paleo art shows it with two small flippers towards the front, and a pair of even smaller flippers in the back, a trait shared among many basilosaurids. Though it could have had larger flippers to propel itself and turn easier, Parasitus is also thought to have had a tail similar to modern dolphins and whales, where a paddle-like structure in a Y shape is primarily used to propel the animal forward. Unlike the majority of dolphins and whales though, Parasitus is thought by many to have been herbivorous. This claim is mostly centered on the sheer density of its bones. This is caused by a process known as osteosclerosis, in which inner cavities are filled. The bones were also vastly oversized, in the sense they had extra growth on their exterior surfaces, something known as pachyostosis. These weren't features of disease or mutation though, but instead they were adaptations that would have given Parasitus the necessary buoyancy control when foraging in shallow waters. Similar bone features are seen, for example, in modern-day manatees, also known as sea cows, which inhabit coastal zones in certain parts of the world. The only problem with this idea is that something as big as Parasitus would have to eat literal tons of plant matter every day, just to survive. With animals like the blue whale, eating a bunch isn't very difficult, since their baleen allows them to sift through enormous amounts of water and obtain an average of 16 tons of food per day. For an animal to forage on the sea floor for that same amount of weight in plants, it would take some time. Some have proposed that Parasitus was mostly a scavenger, looking around for bodies of large animals that sank to the bottom of the ocean. This has been proven unlikely though, given that a diet that consists entirely of scavenging is far too reliant on chance for an animal so big to stay satiated. Overall, there are still many aspects of this creature that are left in the unknown for now. We can only hope that the team of paleontologists working on the dig can receive more funding as time goes on. Because Parasitus was found in Western South America, it would have shared the seas with all sorts of animals, many of which are relatively normal by today's standards. These included sharks, small fish, and turtles, along with many other sea creatures not unlike those around now. There may have also been other smaller cetaceans which would have been a good food source if Parasitus was predatory. Because the announcement of Parasitus is so recent, it's no surprise that there is yet to be any popular media that includes it. However, its sudden rise in fame after being publicly disclosed makes me think that it won't be long before it appears in some sort of film, show, game, or documentary. And that concludes August's Prehistoric Animal. Remember to leave requests in the comments and check out the description for a bunch of links. We've got merch for those who want to rock dino gear out in the wild, a Discord server to hang with fellow dino lovers, and my Fiverr page, where you can commission custom artwork from me. And as always... Hello, um, I'm sure you probably have a lot of questions regarding what this is and what all of this is, and I will try my best to answer roughly none of them. But anyways, for a while now on both my community tab and on my Discord, which you should check out if you haven't already, I've been talking about potential and me trying to prepare for streaming on Twitch as a regular thing for me to do so that way you guys can spend some time with me and I can spend some time with you guys and we just have a bunch of cool dinosaur related fun stuff so yeah 
So I am glad to say that the official start date for that is going to be September 3rd at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time. The plan right now for the first stream is just some painting, some chatting with you guys, and some other nondescript dinosaur related activities, which will be very, very fun. So definitely head down to the link in the description to follow my Twitch. So that way you get notified of both the upcoming stream and for streams to follow since those are going to be very, very fun. So until then, keep your pencil sharp.